Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Here's why some coaches, consultants, and small business owners struggle to get clients. I mean, I got to level with you. Growing your own business is tough. You know, you go from cold calling potential clients to having them maybe hang up in your face. And you may be sending out hundreds of emails without even getting as much as a, hey, thank you so much for reaching out. And you're wasting thousands of dollars on ad spend without even generating any qualified leads. And sometimes it can actually feel like no one wants to buy what it is that you're selling. And when you rely on your business to maybe pay rent and put food on the table, it can put an enormous strain on your emotions and you're actually terrified of having to give up on your dreams and maybe return to a safe nine to five with your tail tucked between your legs if you can't bring in new clients. There's a lot of people that are going through that. And why are some coaches, consultants and small businesses actually enjoying a steady stream of paying clients and while others watch weeks slip by with crickets chirping in their inbox. What is the secret of these coaches that are, uh, you know, raking it in and talking about six figures, eight figures, nine figures, 10 figures, 11 figures, 12 figures, 13 figures, everywhere on the internet. And let me tell you something, that's a wrong question to ask. You asking what is their secret Uh, to success because you know what happens when you ask those questions you're going to end up in some other marketing course or in a guru casino where you're just being taken for a ride and paying more money and entering into more debt and money that you don't even have let me tell you something if you're struggling to get hired by clients on a regular basis you'd better be off looking for the secret of the less successful coaches and consultants and making sure that any habits that you share with them get taken care of pronto like now like today you know because if you look at what the successful people are going to be doing you're only going to be uh, looking at the remnants of you know or the dust of them having gone past whatever strategy that's being sold right now on facebook if somebody is showing you screenshots that means more people already know about that and by the time you implement that strategy guess what you're also going to be another has been. So you want to take care of those habits that you share with the people that are actually not successful. All right. And there's not a lot of books or there's not a lot of talk about people that haven't actually succeeded. And that's where we get most of the lessons. We learn what not to do. So I want you to take note of the podcast today because I'm going to tell you some of the ways far too many coaches and consultants are shooting themselves in the foot and if you're having trouble getting paying clients and you you know you may be making one of these mistakes without even realizing it so today we're going to be talking about mistakes that you want to avoid in order for you to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and eventually just like any other podcast that we put out there you're going to discover the dirty little secrets that no other marketing agency will tell you about growing your coaching and consulting service based business online you know why because they're always wanting money um you know uh, from you we believe in offering knowledge just so that you know our clients and prospects have a happier existence and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable we just charge for implementation isn't that a fair deal okay so if you also like what you hear in this podcast today why don't you jump onto my website www.livelongdigital.com.au and just browse you find something that will 
definitely change your perspective in marketing. Right, let's go on to mistake number one. Mistake number one is a lot of coaches and consultants are using passive marketing as a crutch. All right, you know when you break your foot there and you need to uh, just lean onto something like a walking stick or something like that. A lot of coaches are using passive marketing. You know, look at the internet right now. You've got people like Kim Kardashian that just show up and maybe they're naked or they're smiling or they're talking to Kim or, or I mean Kanye. I already called him Kim Kanye. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever it is, they just show up and because they've done the work, we already know who they are. We they've already positioned themselves she can just say something she could just fart and people will be like oh my god she broke the internet you see the internet has made marketing to far more uh, people very accessible than what it was like in the past where marketing was mostly restricted to the area that you lived in right now some girl in ukraine or bujumbura is able to put out a tiktok and people would actually know what she ate for breakfast on that particular day and today, social media and maybe that push button publishing, it actually lets you put your name out there into the world with ease. But let me tell you something. There's a huge difference between putting your name out and getting your name out. Because when you're using social media platforms just to be present or just to have some sort of profile, it's no more effective for your business than just maybe you go out there, uh, you rent out a corner shop and or maybe get a physical location and then you just hang up a sign and say new patients welcome, new clients welcome and then you just call it a day, you know? Well, yes, you might catch the attention of people who just so happen to see you and they happen to be interested enough to learn more about what it is that you're selling. But you sure won't make any sales though. I always talk about this story about, you know, in my area, there's a dental practice that's just close to the shops. They've got a sign outside that says new patients welcome. I mean, obviously, if somebody has, you know, dental problems or something of that issue, they don't call themselves a patient. So I don't know what that sign is getting and I don't know who gets into that shop because I've never been tempted, even though I've got bucked up teeth that need to be worked on. So you want to look at your current marketing strategies and just look at this. Are you being effective about using these marketing strategies um, just so that you can get your name out, you know, maybe through your own sweat and hustle and, and tears? Because I've seen a lot of people crying on LinkedIn, hoping to get likes. And I'm like, come on, man, we are here for value. We don't want to see you, uh, you know, crying, you know? Yes, obviously, yeah, there's this whole vulnerability thing going on around coaches and consultants, but who cares? We all have our own problems. You know what I mean? Are you just participating on social media in a, in a very weak or passive way, just hoping that clients will come to you? Because we sometimes assume or think that, you know, you put out a post or you put out a Facebook page, people are going to triple stumble and fall, um, you know, just because you, you put out a vulnerable post out there. It don't work like that. Okay, we need to actually take ownership of, you know, the journey that our customers are going through. If we've identified our market and we've clarified our message, we have to make it a point to make sure that we're showing up for them every single day. Let's say your problem solve, helps people solve their money issues or helps the people get into relationships. I'm going to ask you a question. Who are you to stop your problem? prospects or people that could benefit from you to actually receive your service. So you have to show up every single day, come what may, in order for you to actually not just put your name out there, but get your name out there. So, um, you know, I, I did mention a little bit earlier on about people not taking ownership to actually maybe uh, put content out there or be consistent. And there's also another ownership that is not happening within the coaches and, and consultant space. We are not taking ownership to close the sale. 
All right. You see, a lot of um, coaches and consultants, they get maybe a request from people who, uh, you know, asking them, hey, so how, how, what's your process or how do you work or how do we get started? And it's like having a lottery ticket just handed down to them. And some of them, you know, they wide open eyes, you know, they get excited and they think, oh, maybe this will be a winner. And then they make their pitch or do a Zoom and whatever gymnastics they do in order to get a yes um, from the person. And if they don't hear that, well, when they get a no or worse, or they don't hear back at all, they're crushed. You know what I mean? They, most coaches and consultants don't understand that actually closing a sale is their job. You know, when a customer comes to you and shows a bit of interest, the onus is now on you to be of value enough to them to then ask them to, you know, go to the next step or show them what the process is like or literally help them by actually helping them. You know what I mean? How are people going to know, um, you know, the results if they haven't seen any, um, you know, action on your part? So I understand that closing a sale is your job. It's not the prospect's responsibility. So when, when if you're going to be waiting around, twiddling your thumbs and maybe sending DMs or hesitant emails like, uh, <laughs> hey, so any thoughts about that proposal that I sent? It's not going to get people on the path to become paying clients, you know? Our clients or our prospects, just like they're like potential romantic partners. They need to be perused. They need to be persuaded. They need to be warned. All right. That doesn't mean you need to embark on a new career as a, as a creepy stalker. But it does mean that you have to be a little bit active. You know, just show a bit of interest. Be engaged in the process of actually closing the sale because you're helping this person go to the next stage of their life, you just so simply happen to sell ice cream or whatever it is that you're selling today. So if you don't know how to do that, it's your job to start learning how because you got to follow the whole process. Get Help your customers to buy from you. Sometimes our customers don't even know what the next process is or what the next step is. You got to be there. And that's the reason why you got to be active on social media so that you're showing people what your process is. You're understanding their pain. You're justifying their failures. You're actually encouraging their dreams. Go as far as confirming their suspicions and then help them throw rocks at their enemies and then ask them if they wanted fries with that. All right. And at the end of the day, you know, once people know that you're always there, you're going to be able to help them. They actually have seen other people through social proof. It then makes it easy for you to actually get clients, you know. And speaking of which, a lot of coaches and consultants spend far too much time looking for clients, you know, because sometimes the sales cycle for winning new clients is is a lot longer than most coaches and consultants want it to be. You know what I mean? Sometimes people have to confirm with their partners. They have to do board meetings around the proposal, et cetera, et cetera. And that's true for, you know, especially if your process or your system or whatever service you're offering is a very complicated process. So sometimes money just doesn't show up like that. You know, and it takes a whole lot more of hustle to actually score a sale. So a lot of coaches would then say, okay, if they have gotten somebody who's responding to the emails, they now just focus on that person and nobody else. You know, and when a when a when a coach or consultants maybe um, face a slow moving pipeline, they often find themselves with a lot of time on their hands, and then that time generally gets devoted to marketing activities and nothing else. When business is slow, successful coaches and consultants, they actually devote a portion of their non-billable time to projects that put them in a stronger overall position. You know, you start working on your website, you start working on your product development, you start looking at your um, learning new skills, you, you need to start looking at making your portfolio a little bit more, um, you know, attractive, you know? And if you want to be successful, start working on personal projects that give you a better chance to showcase your skills. Because if you don't have enough clients, you should certainly be putting a lot more effort into hunting more of them instead of just following the one person who responded to you. 
And just don't forget about working on some projects that make your business much more attractive to begin with. Because some people, um, some of our clients don't quite know or don't have a reference point of how much you are working and um, what it is that they can expect from you, especially when you're probably getting started. All right, so you want to be building your portfolio and showing people how you can help them by actually helping them. And if there's, uh, you know, times where you you've got a, f a few hooks, you know, in the in play, don't try and just keep focusing on them. All right. And there's also one thing that a lot of coaches and consultants do: they only market when they need clients. Remember that lottery ticket that I was speaking about before. Just like in real life, sometimes those tickets can actually be be winners. You know, you 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 buy a ticket and then you actually win the lottery and you've got so much money you forget about your job, you forget about your other clients, you forget even chasing other clients that you were chasing before. But suddenly the cycle shifts from from maybe famine to feast and there's more than enough work to stay busy week in and week out. Okay, that's when a lot of coaches and consultants actually stop marketing entirely. You know, they, they self-identify as, yeah, we're too busy. And then they lose sight of the fact that previous marketing efforts brought them these clients in the first place. Do you know how many times we reach out to people and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 we're busy. We are so busy. Um, you know, we'll reach out to you when, when there's a bit of uh, a lull in, in our uh, pipeline. And when that shift happens, Many coaches and consultants end up hunting for clients with a big sense of desperation rather than full of confidence. You know, you got to be at a position where you actually turn people down. You know why? Because you've got a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, within your business. And a lot of unsuccess, um, you know, uh, uh, unsuspecting um, coaches and consultants, they don't realize that continual marketing is a must. You always have to be filling up your pipeline, even if you're fully booked. You know, they don't need, they also need to consider maybe reinvesting some or all of their newfound profits into better marketing period, making sure that marketing is automated and making sure that all of, you know, those people that they have worked with before are also churning out, um, you know, are becoming ambassadors and bringing referrals. All of that has to be placed or baked into your marketing. You know, or maybe you're just listening here now and say, you know what, I'm, I'm doing all right. What if this doesn't apply to you? What if any of what I've just said doesn't apply to you? Well, first of all, don't beat yourself up. Every successful coach and consultant out there has made mistakes, you know, maybe in their career or at some point. And many have lived through some of these um, that I've just mentioned today here. Okay. Second of all, you want to be honest with yourself and how you're actually operating within your business because self-awareness isn't the most um, intuitive uh, trait amongst, you know, coaches or professionals, you know. So pat yourself in the back for acknowledging that you, you're falling prey to some of these traps and the fact that you now know how to get past them, that will make your business actually profitable and enjoyable, you know? And you'll be able to actually start making decisions and choose your next actions so that you can get yourself moving in a better direction. Let me tell you something. Course correction is a part of life. And fairly, um, you know, just like anything else, some of these issues that I've mentioned, um, if you correct any of them, you will start enjoying the sight of more sales coming through in your mailbox. You know, of course, it doesn't happen right now, but you have to decide this is a time to start. You know what? Today would actually be a great day to begin. Don't you think so? You know? Because getting your first few clients starts, you know, the momentum that you need and gives you the confidence and, and it starts bringing in, um, you know, that hope that, you know what, maybe I'm onto a good path, you know? Because the biggest problem as a coach or consultant, marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You know, you're going from hiring and managing new stuff, you're balancing books and you're driving growth and a whole lot more of other hats that we wear. And it feels like a constant balancing act where you are definitely pulled in multiple different directions all at once. 
And at the end of the day, your real goal is just to help your clients. You want to be able to spend as much time as possible, you know what, changing people's lives and solving people's problems. And you don't want to waste countless hours each week trying to navigate the whole world of um, online marketing. And you certainly don't have to maybe spend yet another minute on the phone having to beg people to hire your services. And let me tell you something, you don't have to. I don't. But we still have a long list of clients who want to work with us, not because I'm a genius or anything, but it's because we've mastered, you know, how to actually have automated marketing and really creating content that resonates with our audience. Because if you've ever worked maybe as a, as a coach or a consultant, you will know about the fear and frustration of going out on your own. And you would know, you know, well truly well how stressful it can be to try and generate a steady income during maybe the first few months and it can be one of the most terrifying but let me tell you rewarding feelings in the world you know what's even worse is when you maybe you quit a steady job and you start you know out on your own as a freelancer because going from steady income benefits and paid time to maybe spor sporadic paydays, zero benefits and working um, whenever necessary, it seems so far away from uh, the, the dream that we were sold on entrepreneurship. But the good news is it doesn't and it shouldn't, you know, have it, it doesn't have to take you long for you to actually get back on your feet and actually start uh, generating leads unless you allow it to. Because if you're on your first few months, maybe, or, you know, maybe first few days of the year or whatever, there's a few things that you can do for you to actually start landing, um, you know, your clients and find a bit of stability. One thing that I always tell people to do is just talk to your family and friends. There is power in loose connections. You never know who your friends know or who your family people, um, you know, interact with out there that might be in need of your services or whatever products that you have. You know, whatever you do, don't skimp on this step. Yes, we might have been detached from a few of our friends, um, you know, due to the pandemic and everything else. But guess what? This is a time to rekindle maybe old flames because you've got a contextual point of reference of how you actually know them. It's easier to sell yourself to people that already know you than people that don't care about you or know who you are. So whatever you do, don't skip this step. Because one of the main reasons why coaches and consultants struggle to get their first few clients is they never make a point to talk about their work with friends and family. You know, maybe they're afraid, you know, the, it, it feels like they're promoting themselves or mixing business with personal life. But as a new coach or consultant or somebody who's just maybe trying to get back on their feet, this should be one of the first things that you should do. Because maybe your friends and family, you know, have sent, you know, you, they, they might be able to send you a referral, you know, without even you telling them what you're doing for a living. How are they going to know how they can help you or how to listen to, um, you know, people that might have the, 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 the pain that you can solve? You know, teach them how to listen out for you. you. You have an army of salespeople that you're living with every single day. You know why? Because they care about you. They will do whatever it is just to see you happy. So just think about how many leads you could get if, if you would just send a few emails or text messages to friends and family asking them if they know anyone who might need your service. This might be the, this might actually be the fastest way to get clients. And it actually works, especially well within the first few months of your freelance business while everything is still new because your um, relatives don't want you to fail, you know? And when you've maybe, um, ex ex you know, ex um, exhausted your friendship base or your, your relatives, you want to start posting on job boards and, and do this despite what people may say. Because when I was starting out as a, as a freelancer in the SEO space, what I used to do is I used to go on job boards like Upwork and LinkedIn job. And indeed, believe it or not, and pretty much any other place where people go to, to look for freelancers, 
You know, some people will tell you that job boards are a bad way to get clients, but job boards work no matter what the people may actually say. You must, um, you, you know, you, you, you just have to figure out who your ideal client is and don't waste time on anyone else. And then get into a routine of posting maybe a certain amount of proposals each day or every week. And then you almost certainly get new clients every single month. Whatever you do, don't try and copy and paste uh, proposals there. Most freelancers just take that approach. And that's why there's so many people who talk bad about job boards. Because if you take the time to actually write a unique proposal or maybe do a video and actually pr introduce yourself and show them exactly what it is that you do in this format. Here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here is how it works. And here's what I want you to do next. And here's why it's safe and smart for you to do so. I used to create, um, you know, for each company that I'll reach out to a unique uh, web portal where they would see their very unique website. And I would actually do um, a, 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 a targeted, you know, website audit. So take the time to make a unique proposal for you to stand out. And that really comes down to having the discipline to search for the jobs and submit for the proposals on a daily basis, no matter how many times you're rejected, because one day will be your day. And while you're doing that, don't forget about networking and meetups. This also ties in with old friends and family. Because another great place for you to find your first few clients is to go networking. You know, there's events like local meetups where entrepreneurs meet up. You, you might hate the idea of networking and say, maybe I'm an introvert or something like that. But it may, um, you know, or it may seem like a giant waste of time. But believe it or not, going to your local BNI meetup or conference is actually a great way to get your first few clients quickly. Just do your homework ahead of time and make sure that you're networking with the right people. You know, we've all met one or two uh, maybe overly gung-ho networking types who seem to love networking for the sake of networking. But as a coach or consultant, your time is extremely valuable. So, you know, be very intentional about where you're going and why you're there and what you're going to be, you know, looking to get out of the experience. I think it was, um, I've forgotten who says this. Ask not what the world is going to give you, but what you are going to give um, out to the world. If you lead with value, guess what? No matter how much, if people, even if people don't know you, they get to trust you and like you and people do business with those they know, like, and trust. I mean, expect, of course, don't just go in with the expectation that you're going to walk out with your first client after day one, but it takes the initiative to actually make the most of, of you showing up at, at a networking event and being very helpful. And that means you, you show up, you introduce yourself, you bring uh, whatever business cards or portfolio that you might have and just consider showing up with value and make a first great impression. You know what I mean? Because the people that are at the networking event, they're also looking for new people to get to know because they, they are already saturated with the faces that they see every day. You know? And like I mentioned, a portfolio. A lot of... Um, you know, coaches and consultants, they don't have a portfolio of the work that they have done. Create one or maybe have a website that people can literally have a reference point of how you actually can do what you say you're doing. Because sometimes you don't have social proof. But if you've got a, a, a portfolio that people can, can see what you can do for them, it makes it easy for them to visualize how they can engage you. Because one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of coaches and consultants make early on is they don't get testimonials or maybe build a portfolio or think about doing case studies, you know, because these are absolute, absolutely crucial um, aspects to your freelance business success. So start building them as quickly as you can. And a great way for you to build a portfolio is maybe before you even have the clients, you want to offer work for maybe re reputable businesses or a non-for-profit Okay, and then you document the project step by step. There's people that have done this uh, in the past and, you know, just offering your services for free to well-known brands. And now you would have case studies and testimonials because your future customers are not going to know that you did this for free. It's called the curious student method.
You just show up to people and say, hey, I, I see you're doing X, Y, and Z within your business. I was wondering if I could help you with my processes and in turn, I get a, a testimonial either on LinkedIn or on my website. A lot of people are happy to do that, you know? So half of the time, maybe you don't want to waste your time and money doing things like SEO, blogging, advertising until you probably have a very amazing portfolio with testimonials and social proof and a few case studies out there. Because those are all great marketing tactics, but they only work better as part of a long term strategy. And right now you just want to focus on maybe paying your bills and building consistency within your business. So like I said, Talk to family and friends and ask for referrals. Find clients on job boards and anywhere else where people are looking for freelancers. Go in person to networking events and create incentive, um, you know, incentives for those um, happy clients that you have created to refer business for you. And sometimes put out your work in order for you to build a portfolio with testimonials and case studies. Let me tell you something. If you do these steps, you'll be well on your way to lending your first few clients and finding stability in your new uh, business as a coach or consultant. I really want you to be successful, all right? I can't wait for you to actually start getting your first few clients and then start getting the momentum that you actually need in order for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.